This this is like Yachty rapping. This is like he rapping for the children. Fuck these kids. That's not what keep you popping. If you want to be a successful music artist, what matters more? The opinion of the artist or the opinion of the fans? Joe Budden and Drake got in a major beef when Joe Budden criticized his latest project, but in Drake's response to Joe Budden and Drake's recent rollout and musical selection, I think he actually revealed a lot about the formula for longevity in music, and it'll answer your question. So let's see what Drake thinks. Joe Budden, if you like summarize it, he basically said, hey, yo, man, like, grow up, bruh. Mm -hmm. Like, your topics... They, they're, they're a little bit young, you know, in substance. We know that you're older. I think he's like 36, 37. Mm -hmm. Just please get a little older, mature. You're a goat. He didn't deny any of that stuff, mm -hmm. but we want to hear more growth. And that was his personal opinion, right? Drake responded, and this is the response that starts to reveal some details. And we're also going to look at his album as a whole to really break this down to see what he thinks the formula is and whether, you know, maybe other artists should chase it or not. One. Champagne Poppy says, at Joe Budden, you have failed at music. <laughs> you left behind, you left it behind to do what you're doing in this clip, criticizing, because this is what actually pays your bills. For any artist watching this, just remember you are watching a failure give their opinion on his idea of a recipe for success. Mm. A quitter give their opinion on how to achieve longevity. You switch careers because the things that pop up in your brain had you broken living check to check, check with Q's and not with CK. That must yeah, be yeah. some like Canadian shit. I that, man. I think it's just to add a little flair. <laughs> a little flair? Okay, <laughs> a little flair. The things that were popping up in your brain had you broken living check to check and the raps you write had 450 men showing up to your shows in dusty and Nietzsche jeans. <laughs> To screw up their face to mu move music 29 and pretend you are the GOAT. Please, to any artist that's doing what they feel is right, don't let these opinions affect your mindset after the fact. This guy is the poster child of frustration and surrendering. You, you retired and we never hung up your jersey. We don't even remember your number. We know you for doing this, podcasting. You withdrew from rap not because you accomplished all you need to. It's because it wasn't working for you. I never want anybody in the generations to think that the whole everybody's entitled to their own opinion thing is a real thing. This man is projecting his own self-hate and the fact that I did and continue to do everything he wanted to do for himself. If you need it put in simpler terms, I own a 767. He owns a modest house in the 973 and flies first class on special occasions. All right. Ah, shit. Drake said a mouthful. <laughs> and this is exactly why his mouthful, in my opinion, low key reveals some counter productivity. Okay. First of all, you're trying to inspire your artist, yet. Uh, yeah, I know you're going with this. <laughs> he's like stunting on him. Like, basically, if you are not me, if you don't own a 767, right, you aren't successful. Your opinion doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, which is like 99.99% of people. Let's just start there, right? <laughs> and on top of that, right? To use, I hate when these artists, artists do this. You're trying to say that art is about the art, right? Art is not about the awards, the accolades, and the money. But then you use your awards, accolades, and money to say that you are better than another artist or somebody else, mm -hmm. right? So again, artists, if y'all are on Drake level, of achievement, not in that GOAT conversation, y'all are failures. And I'm starting on not just Joe, but all of y'all with Joe just being a surrogate, right? So that part is, I don't know, like it, if I was an artist, because that's what I think, I'd be like, man, I don't know, bro. I can't like this because you <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're talking about me. Because you low-key stunned on me where I am currently, right? But then, you know, a lot of artists are um, not self-aware enough to realize Delusional. that, that <laughs> he's not talking about me. He's not that. talking about me. That's just not. That's not just artists. No, I, 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 I thought I kid. I play. I thought the same thing because I was like, man, to your point, uh, he's just shit on majority of the world. Yeah. But you see a lot of <laughs> artists in the comments like, yeah, you know what I'm saying, stand up for yourself. Yeah, yep. he's right. I'm like, man, he he is talking about you as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how many do we know? We'll see them in our, in our comments when we talk about an artist and then the the, cop, the artist will be talking about how bad that artist is 
and they're stunning on a, I mean, they're critique, critiquing an artist that's more successful than them by those measures. Yeah, but that so, should that should be part of the game. So that whole thing, <laughs> right? I don't really know about that. Like somebody not being able to critique you just because they aren't as successful from an artistic standpoint. Artistic, right? Not a capitalism, like how you move with your money and decisions you should have made for your brand and mm -hmm. things like that. Then you can say, well, there might be some things they haven't experienced, but art is not supposed to be money based based on what artists say. That's what they tell you. That's what they tell you. <laughs> we already know, man. Once they get into position, it benefits them. They go back against it. But, all right, cool. Fan base or not, the opinions. So a big critique, again, Joe Budden saying, yo, you're speaking to the youth. Well... Obviously, just hanging around Lil Yachty a lot. Now that kind of like makes me, I don't know, even question all the hanging out. Was like, what, what, are you just absorbing his powers for the album, bro? Yeah, that's what he do. Are y'all real friends? That's, that's, you know what I mean? Drake's thing, bro. Don't 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 mess up my PR fantasy, man. I thought y'all were really just kicking it. Now I feel I don't know if it's, uh, you know. I think Yachty might be the first um, Drake parasitic host. A host that also benefited from it. That also benefits, and is actually gonna get to stick around. Mm. You can't get rid of Lil Yachty, man. Hey, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> with that being said, you got Lil Yachty. Lil Yachty's obviously younger. If you look at the features on this project, oh yeah, Tizo, well, Tizo, Tizo touchdown, Yeet, Yeet. Um, who else was on there that was in the young category? Those are the three that stood out to me the most. Was Tizo. I mean, even yeah, Yachty is young in age, but I was kind of looking at the more like young new acts. You know what I'm okay. saying? Tizo and um, Yeet definitely kind of cover that base. I Those like, two stick out. I feel like I'm missing somebody too. Right. Sexy Red. Sexy, Sexy Red. Red. Yep, Sexy Red is on there. So this is where we get into the struggle when it comes into sex, success in the music business and like the capitalism of it all, right? And the actual music. Because if fans didn't matter the most, to me, fans do matter the most when it comes to the music business because he wouldn't put these new people that he put on it, these young people that he put on it, if he wasn't trying to tap into that fan base, this is an obvious play to stay relevant and and touch, stay in touch or uh, connect with the younger people. Yep. Right. Which is a common strategy. This isn't like a, like a critiquing Drake for doing it. Like it's very known, like in the music industry, we'll often say like keeping young people around, keep you fresh and make sure you don't get disconnected mm -hmm. um, and too far away from things. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Lose touch. So it's not even critiquing it as a bad thing, but it does show, well, why are you doing it in the first place? You're doing it because you're trying to connect. If you're trying to connect, that means you're trying and, try, and making decisions to connect with them. That means you care about the fans opinion. Okay. okay. That alone yeah. says the fans matter the most. Unless he really does think that Sexy Red is a musical goat and deserves to be placed on there. You think he thinks that? I can see where he's coming from. I don't do think, think it matters. That. Because I think there's <laughs> other people that he also thinks are good. That didn't make it? That didn't make the project. That's fair. Okay. That's and fair. they have Sexy <laughs> Yeet and Tizo. Yeah, the Yeet is the most obvious one. On at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And then have Yachty be a part of the, you know, the foundation yeah. of the project. Yeah. That says, I want to be able to touch base. I will, either I'm afraid of um, losing touch or I really care about continuing to connect. Whichever way you want to look at it, right? And can, caring about continuing to connect and I make these strategic moves to connect means I know the fans are the people who matter most. I got to interrupt this video real quick to let the artists and managers who are looking to grow know that I have a major announcement because as many of you know, we're bringing out J.R. McKee, who is responsible for selling over 160 million records, literally, along with us, right? We want to meet artists in person. However, many of you guys said, I can't make it to that event, brand man. I really want to make it. And I know that the information is going to be great because I got to see the growth from artists who went last time. Great. Well, we finally broke down and decided to allow artists to get access to a replay 30 days after the event. However, you have to buy your ticket to the event before the event. We're not going to give anybody access to the event or the ability to submit their music for us to listen to if they don't purchase their ticket before the event, before it sells out. As many of y'all know already, there's only 100 tickets available. So you will have the ability to get your music listened to, be considered to have a free one-on-one -on -one call with me, J.R. McKee, and Ja'Cory, 
also be shared on our social media platforms amounting to over 200,000 followers and be put in front of our record label distributor and manager friends, the people who can help you grow. And if they want to reach out, like we'll help facilitate that. So that's the quick announcement. October 15th, www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash DC. We'll put the link in the description on YouTube. If you want your music considered, if you want to see this exclusive event that we're only showing in a private space, never putting out this information publicly online, go ahead and grab it before they're sold out. Peace. And and you just made me think about something, man, because I'm thinking about, I think it was either Scorpion or More Life, whichever one he released while X was still alive. And a huge critique that he got back then was that, like, hey, you didn't tap into none of, like, the smoke perps and the XXS and Tassions. Like, you didn't, mm-hmm. you just completely ignored this new, like, young subculture and stayed up here. And we can feel that, right? The music is a little bit out of touch, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, it's just people we would expect to see on it that aren't there. And so now we're talking about, you know, six, seven years later that it took him to maybe learn that, oh, maybe I did make a mistake in that. And then he's getting criticized for it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's it's definitely a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Yeah, and that's a part of being at that level, right? You already know there's going to be both sides. But then, again, so somebody like Joe, from what I'm hearing on his side is, because he Austin does come from a period purest opinion even Mm -hmm. if it's wrong or disagreeable he's basically saying i just want to see you directly as an artist your personal growth that's what if if you kind of like go through the layers Mm -hmm. who are you and where are you and let it just be you and your expression versus constantly making these moves Mm -hmm. to connect and stay relevant in a traditional way and i think what joe is saying right when you take out the Joe-isms of it, because that's always going to come off as offensive and brash, right? Yeah. Is Drake, you're Drake. All right, because let's be clear. He did clearly separate him and say, like, Drake is not the field. He isn't a normal dude. He used the term golden child. Mm -hmm. Like, he is that dude. And because you're that dude, I think a couple things. One, he might have higher expectations of him whatever he considers to be his expectations. But I think he also is saying, you have the ability to do it. Something that a lot of artists don't, mm-hmm. right? Who have pop level success or whatever. Like people have to keep chasing and chasing to make these moves. And maybe he's saying like, yo, bro, like you should have the freedom, right? Cause you're you to do something mm-hmm. like purely. And that's what most artists are fighting for to just be them. Like you should just like open up and just be you. I think some of those things are coming from that point, which could yeah. be a, point, uh, a, a sense of jealousy or, or whatever. But it, but in a, I don't even know if you call it a good or bad way. But it's like what you know, like when an old person said, "Y'all got opportunities we never had." Yeah. Like, are, are you saying it's hate, or is it like like they just don't feel like you're doing everything that you should yeah. be doing? What you have, it's I like don't know. Frustrated, frustrated, good intention. Frustrated. There yeah. we go. Frustrated. Yeah. Because even I was talking about this on my live stream where I was like. I do agree with that with Joe Budden, Joe Budden's point, right? Like, I'm, I'm learning about art from Jay-Z. You know, J. Cole is teaching me about, you know, how to be a better family man for whenever I decide <laughs> to take that route. I don't know what Kendrick is teaching me, if I really think about it, but something's in there. Kendrick is getting, <laughs> Kendrick is like, you know, it's the one, abs, it's like ab, this abstract way yeah. of connecting, like, real problems. Like, I feel like I'm always getting inside Kendrick's mind where he is at that time. Okay. Like, the shit that yeah. he really cares about or is finding yeah. issue with. Like, if you go to the Pimper Butterfly, that was the stuff that was on his mind. He really wanted to have a voice in that moment. It felt like yeah. that was what's on his mind. This, uh, you know, damn, he integrated a lot of those things. And then here, the last project, uh, Mr. Morale or whatever felt like that therapy, a therapy session. Yeah, right? okay. I can so it's see like, that. It always just feels like it's coming from him direct. He presents it in different ways, but it's what he cares about or what he's experiencing. That's yeah. what Kendrick feels like. It's like a real-time journal. That's what, yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. So, but in the conversation of me thinking about that, I was like, just thinking about Drake's life over the last, what, like 12, 15 years. And, I mean, he's been, you know, as big as he's been for at least a decade at this point. Mm-hmm. Right. 
I wouldn't be surprised to learn that Drake is the modern day version of like Michael Jackson, right? You know how like Michael Jackson kind of always got critiques of like, yo, he's been famous and in this whole other world for so long that like he literally does not view the world. Like his, his lived experiences, he can't talk about it because we still wouldn't be able to connect. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. and so to the point that, when, you know, Joe made about Drake, like, yo, man, stop fucking these 25 year olds, stop pandering to the youth. I'm like, well, bro, he's been a pop star for like a decade. You're saying we wouldn't understand what it's like to smash 25 year olds? No, 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 not saying that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what do you mean? No, like, but that might be his life. That might really just be his life. It might not be deeper than that. Yeah. Like, his life really might just be smashing 25 year olds, going out to eat, making music. And then trying to figure out how to stay tapped in with young people. So if that is his life, then he is talking about his. <laughs> he is. Well, you know I, and I saw some <laughs> comments, especially from women, that was like, he needs to grow up. So Joe is saying, grow up through your music. Mm -hmm. And he's, but he could be looking at, you know, a symptom yeah. versus some fans are looking at the cause, like, no, you actually haven't grown up. So maybe, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe Drake is like, no, nah, bro, this is me. Mm -hmm. But the fans are like, so, well, some fans were like, yeah, nah, bro, like, you need to grow up. Because I remember it was, like, between him and Future. That's what I saw in the comments. They were like, both of them need to grow up. No, uh, no, no it was like, yeah. it was like Drake's fans want him to grow up, but Future fans don't want him to grow yeah. up. That's what they were saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then some people were saying, is Drake really him or not? Like, no one, like, people feel like he's always pretending or something like that. I saw a lot of that in the comments. Mm -hmm. But... All this still is dictated by the perception of the fans. Yeah. It's all falling back to the fans. So I don't think you can really like argue that. Now, if we're talking about music business success, because one, those are the people who buy from you. I don't even know how you argue. Like these are the people who are funding your career. Yeah. And if you don't have these people fund your career, we know the labels are not gonna support you. Then it's obvious that their opinion matters the most. We know the labels don't matter because how many times, not the labels, but like, let's just say music professionals like us, right? We know our opinion don't matter either because if a song pops off and we didn't like it, we still gonna have to market and push it. Yeah, man, still gotta do my job. Still gotta do your <laughs> job, right? We've had all marketed songs that we didn't like, maybe, or just didn't think it was because maybe we didn't like it at first and then we started to like it. Or, we liked it, but we didn't think that, that other people were going to like it like that. And they really liked it. Yeah. Right? So there's all these different versions. The thing that gets pushed the most, though, is always going to be dictated by the fans and the, and the masses. Yeah. And, and I think, too, it's important to distinguish between what type of fan they are. Right? Mm -hmm. so you, you take it back to Joe. Joe isn't an, a, your typical music fan, right? The typical music fan probably doesn't know much about music theory and music creation. Maybe knows a little bit about music business from what they see on like instagram posts and their random artists yeah you know they follow kind of talking about stuff listening to music through radio or clubs or friend like the the average fan opinion i can understand if an artist doesn't want to take that seriously i do think there are points when it should be right to your point like hey like you, you need to understand the mind of the people that are buying your product so even if you don't care to hear you need to care to understand you know what i'm saying where that opinion is coming from but then I think there is a certain level of fan whose opinions do outweigh the opinions of other fans. And I look at those as like the super fans, right? The ones that do understand music creation and maybe are super audiophiles and they've been collecting vinyls for years and years and have always kept in touch with the music scene. Like those are people that have a different take on music that I think is a bit more valuable than the average music fans take. And I do think it's unfair to say that that fan's perspective doesn't matter. Because artists love saying that, bro. Artists, that's their go-to argument, is you don't make music, so you can't critique it. But if all that matter, one, it was two things. That one, I, I think that leads to artists getting caught in this cycle of seeking other artists' validation, because they feel like other artists opinions matter more than the fans like bro like if you go make a song and Kanye love it but nobody buys that shit whose opinion really matter Kanye's or the fans the fans opinion matter more in that situation right Kanye told you this shit will fall but for whatever reason these niggas didn't buy this shit you know what I'm saying their opinion matters more so I, I think it puts artists in this weird like cycle of always chasing artist validation um but then on man what was I going to but then the second thing on top of that is just like 
you know, like, I think is you have to also look at, like, where the fan is coming from with that, right? Like, so in Joe's case, it, to your point, it didn't feel like he was trying to attack Drake. It's just like, hey, man, this is what I feel as a Drake fan. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's not the only Drake fan to say that. He's just the big, he's just the Drake fan with the biggest voice that has said it. You know and that's, mean? as a matter of fact, that wasn't even a real critique. It was just a desire. Yeah. That's all it was. And we've all had that. But the Joeisms made it sound like a critique. Of course, the Joe, yeah, yeah the Joe, yeah. the Joe doing, <laughs> doing Joe's thing. But we've all had that before. It's like, dang, I want this type of energy from you. I want to hear you in this space. Or I want to hear you. this talk. artist. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear you with this artist and this collab. It might be, I might not even hate the thing you came out with, but you know, sometimes when you eat some food that wasn't the food you had a taste for, mm-hmm. so you were like, ah. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't what I want. I was yeah, expecting. Yeah. Yeah. And I still want that. So that's what it feels like. I know. I, I, I just think it's a, it's interesting. I never would have guessed that Joe Budden would be the poster child of the fan opinion. You know what I'm saying? I just, it makes sense mm-hmm. now that I kind of see it in the moment, but I just never would have saw that coming. But yeah. I think that's the bigger conversation, right? Because like, a lot of artists, man, like they probably hate to hear, but artists are snobs about this shit, bro. Man, how many? I can't tell you how many artists we've heard talk bad about other artists' stuff. Oh yeah, right. Artists are haters, and then <laughs> they don't know how many artists are talking bad about their stuff. Yep. <laughs> right, calling their stuff corny or bad or whatever it is. Like it's a cycle, man. So I, when it comes <laughs> down to it. Y'all don't want to hear anybody's opinion if they don't agree with it. Exactly, bro. But the problem is you are doing something that is by nature subjective at the end point of how it gets experienced. Even if you got like technical, you know, things done correctly Mm -hmm. in this field, (laughs) it's consumed objectively, which is hard, right? Because people got different experiences, so they might not know how to connect with it. But that is the end result. So when it comes to your success, making it a career, undoubtedly, bro. The fans' opinion matters. Yeah, hundred percent. Not even close, bro. Like, if I had to put percentages on it, I would say fan opinion sixty to seventy percent, artist opinion twenty to thirty percent, industry professional opinion ten percent. Hmm. I might do industry professional opinion even smaller. Hmm. I think like seven percent. Go six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I said industry professional opinion of the actual music. Yeah, it's okay. So, what matters when it comes to the industry professional? One, they need to like you, right? Like, it's more of the how they feel about you as a whole. So, that goes beyond the music. Yeah. So, that's a whole other category. If we're just talking about music, I think, yeah. It's maybe like six, seven percent. I was gonna say, yeah. If we were talking about music, I think it's less than ten. Just talking about we're talking about, about infrastructure, I think ten percent. Infrastructure. Yeah. And the reason <laughs> the it does matter because it's almost it's, it it would be zero, in my opinion, because you're just behind the scenes, bro. Do your job. However, you have people in these labels, right, that are fighting for certain artists. So if you don't have nobody fighting for you because they don't like your music, you won't get a certain level yeah, of will. leverage. However. Yeah. If we fight for you and you get a certain look, and then the fans don't fuck with it, then everybody down bad. Then we down bad. <laughs> so then you still gonna see an industry professional try to ride with an artist that has some momentum. Sometimes even more than somebody they like, because it's like, well, I gotta get my raise. I gotta exactly. get attached to this artist. Up, yeah, so I can flip. So the industry <laughs> professional is very swayable because their life yeah. depends on. The outcome of the artist. That's fair. That's a good, that's a fair point. Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, bro. I want to rock with you, but last minute I brought you up, they talked about fire for me, so I gotta, <laughs> I gotta rock with you. This young dude that's coming up, bro. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ask me, you want to get dropped with him? Like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Look, tell us what y'all think. This is another clip. There's no labels necessary. I'm Brandman Shine. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.